What do we mean by evidence? Traditionally, evidence is considered to be results that are produced through a rigorous and systematic scientific process with the gold standard of a randomized controlled trial as the pinnacle. However, in practice, there are many different types of evidence. Here's a continuum that we can use, which was developed by the m and &E team on the Leadership, Management, and Governance project. On one side of the evidence continuum, we can draw from testimonials, stories, and individual case studies, which tell us about how an intervention or program affected one person or an institution. On the other side of the spectrum, randomized controlled trials can help show attribution. The most important point about evidence is to use the right kind of evidence for your intended purpose. If we want to know how a program has affected an individual or a group of people, then anecdotal evidence can provide rich detail on an individual's perceptions and perceived changes in attitudes and behaviors. This information is important to inform issues of access and person-centered care. While we would not change an entire strategy based on one person's opinion, grouped together, testimonials can provide broad direction to be considered in program design and evaluation. Further along the continuum, we may want to understand the process of how an intervention or program has been implemented. Process evaluations, program monitoring data, and service delivery data from the intervention sites will provide valuable evidence for how to adapt programs so that they are more effective in a particular context. If we want to know how a program has affected health behaviors, we would need to measure evidence before and after an intervention. The same is true for institutional and health status change. At the far right of the continuum, if we want to know whether the program's interventions are directly linked to or cause the improvements, then we need evidence from the program as well as comparison sites without the intervention. Determining causation usually requires some level of randomization so that we know that the difference is actually due to the program and not to chance. At MSH, we think that using the appropriate evidence for the appropriate reason matters, especially when it comes to decision making. Drawing on monitoring and evaluation, applied research, adaptive learning, and knowledge management allows MSH to promote collaboration, learning, and adaptation across the project cycle. This helps move evidence in all of its forms into practice to improve the health and development of people and communities we serve. Having these discussions at MSH helps us to be a more evidence-driven organization. In your work, what challenges have you faced in promoting evidence-informed decision-making? Thank you for watching this episode of the Evidence and Action in the Fastlane Seminar. Visit leadernet.org to view other episodes and participate in the discussion.